I've been through engineering school and to be honest, it was hard. Eventually I got my degree and got a job, but now looking back, I've made a lot of mistakes. So if I were back in engineering school again, here's how I would study effectively as an engineering student. First, let's talk about two big principles that I recently learned and I wished I learned this in college. I'm not sure if any of you read these books yet. I'm gonna show you real quick. I mean, I feel like everyone has read these books, but the first book is Atomic Habit by James Clear. And the second book is Deep Work by Cal Newport. So deep work is the ability to focus without distraction on a demanding task. And when it comes to studying for engineering school, you really need to put in your focus. Let's talk about the 80-20 rules and how it applies to engineering school. So essentially, it means that you need to focus your attention to the 20% of the work that will produce you 80% of the result. So what are the results that you want in engineering school? of course, is to get the Bachelor of Science in whatever engineering. And in order to get the degree, you need to pass all of the engineering classes. And to be able to pass all of the class, you need to get C or above grade for all of your homework, your quizzes, your exam, your projects. And in order to do that, it all boiling down to solving problem at the end of the day. Okay, we're gonna come back to how to solve problem, but utilizing the deep works principle and shifting all of your focusing on solving problem and entering school is the number one thing that you need to pay attention to. Okay, next let's talk about atomic habit. If you live this long, you probably do something in your life that is so repetitive that it's become a habit. For example, when you wake up in the morning, you have to go use the restroom. That's a habit. Studying for engineering should become like a habit. It should be embedded into your daily routine in college that when you sit on a desk, you immediately think of solving engineering problems. So in this book, James Clear discussed a lot of method on how to apply atomic habit into your daily life to increase productivity and to limit distraction. When it comes to distraction, you can either go hard and cut out all of the distraction, like all social media, your phone, everything. But let's be honest, we're college students, so we're not going to do that. Cutting out the distraction might not be so easy to do. So in Atomic Habit, James Clear talk about taking your commitment into another level. So if you are serious about engineering school, you need to marry it for four years. Yes, I said that. You need to marry it for four years. What he suggests you to do is going to write a contract to yourself stating what you want to achieve during your four years of college, like what's your goals for your class, what grade you want to get, etc. And then you're going to write down what consequences that you're going to have if you don't achieve those goals. For example, you're going to owe your mom or your dad like a certain amount of money or you're going to have to pay for your own cost. All of the consequences that you can think of, write all down and then have an accountable party to sign the contract with you. The accountable partner could be your friends, your parents, I mean, your neighbor. I don't know if they are truly care about you. They probably will sign it for you. <laughs> okay, while this method will definitely give you the motivation to push you to study, it can definitely put a certain pressure into yourself. Like you're gonna be thinking, oh, like if I don't pass this class, I'm gonna be a failure, etc. So I'm going to share with you seven tips that will help you study effectively so you don't burn out as a student. Tip number one is you need to plan out your semester beforehand. Most professors in college will give you this thing called syllabus. I'm sure everyone knows what a syllabus is and those paper are not for shoving it into your backpack. You need to write down all of the exam day, all of the homework due day, all of the projects that they give you in the class and you're going to put them on your calendar and you need to plan out your semester accordingly. With that said, being flexible with your study plan is also important because you will quickly realize that you are better at certain class than others. So I would focus more of your time on the harder subjects. Make a study plan, but also know your strength and your weaknesses is tip number one. Tip number two is you need to practice atomic habit and deep work and you need to incorporate it into your studying routine when it comes to solving problems. While taking notes and making your notes pretty have a certain advantage, 
Solving problem repeatedly and consistently will help you ace your exam. When you practice solving your problem over and over again, your brain will recognize the pattern and next time when you come across a similar problem, you will automatically know how to solve the problem or know how to approach it logically. And it will save you a tons of time to think and to analyze. Solving a variety of problems will also help increase your problem solving skill. Tip number three is you need to create a system on how to solve problems. For example, when you solve statics and dynamics problem, the first step that I will have to always do is to draw a free body diagram and write down Newton laws and then solve the equation. When you solve fluid static problem, the first step is you need to write down your Bernoulli equation things like that. So what I'm trying to get at is you need to write down the given and then gather all of the necessary information or the equation that will help you solve the problem and then show your work. You basically create a step-by-step -step solution to your problems. The next tip is to take advantage of free resources on campus. And I get it, I don't like spending more time than I have to in class. But if during your lecture you don't understand something, stay behind the class and try to ask your professor to explain it again for you. I'm sure they will happily do it for you. Another thing you can do is you can go to teaching assistant study hour. At my university, some of the harder class, they have what we call a TA hour, where the person will help you is a graduate student who also helped the professor on the class. They are there to help explain anything to you, or if you have any question on your homework, you can ask them. I definitely find a lot of benefit of going to TA hour when I was in school. Another things you can do is you can also find a study group or a study buddy for entering classes. So my first and my second year, I was like a solo studier. And to be honest, it was so hard. I don't feel the motivation. I don't feel like I want to study at all. But when I got into my junior and my senior year, I made some friends from going to all these engineering organizations on campus and they invited me to a study session. I was like, yeah, I'll go. And I find a lot of joy in studying with other people. Something about watching another colleague going through the same trouble you go through just make you feel like I got this, basically. Another tip for studying for engineering classes is YouTube. So YouTube had a tons of channel that post like free content to help you studying for engineering classes. For example, this channel right here, he's a professor and he helped you study static and dynamics. And I mean, there are just so many channel on YouTube. I don't know if you can give me a recommendation in the comment section. I can make a video about this later. Okay, tip number five is you need to organize your note. So I'm a person who take notes by hand. I love writing down what I learned on paper. And I used to keep a lot of that in college. After college, I move around so much that I kind of lost most of it. But I'm gonna show you what I save on my Google Drive. So basically I just have the class name as the folder name. And usually I have like a homework file and a note file. But these are, for example, this class right here for fluid mechanics i basically save all of the class notes the homework and the and the exam in here the next tip is to make your own cheat sheet so for entering exam most professor will allow you to have a sheet of paper that you have all of your equation on there while you can go online and buy the equation or the cheat sheet for yourself and it saves you time i would actually recommend you to make it yourself because the process of writing down things and to organize each equation and to like note down what each variable means and what unit go with each variable and then when to use the equation things like that it will get embedded into your brain. Whether you know it or not, it will help with your problem solving skill. Your brain register what you write down so much better than when you just scan it through. If you're lucky, you have a photographic memory. I'm not talking to you. Tip number seven and the last tip is to have some relaxing hour for your week. This could be hanging out with friends. You can go get coffee with your friend, with your classmate, or you can take a walk outside, get some sunlight eat some good food, get enough sleep, talk to someone about your struggle, anything that gets your mind off engineering. You basically just need an outlet for all of your stress. So I saw this red post and I feel so bad for what this person is going through right now because he or she is really stressed out about engineering school and 
we all agree that most engineers are introvert and we don't like to socialize. But when you're in college, you experience like this whole new world of basically just a bunch of 18, 19, 20 college kid. You don't know where you would belong to, and you don't have an outlet to let out all of your fear, your stress, and your mental health can go down the drain. By just like lock yourself into a room and not associate yourself with to anyone, so be sure to take care of your mental health. Go talk to someone. There are a lot of free resources on campus that help students with their struggle. I hope all of these tips was helpful. I know what you're going through. If you struggling with entering school, comment down below. I would be glad to talk to you and help motivate you. I'm currently studying for the PE, so I'm going to apply all of these tips to my studying session. And make sure to check out this video where I talk about what laptop for engineering student to use. With that said, I will see you in the next video.